everybody. Today we're going to be painting a sloth, like this little guy. The colors we're going to be using today are phthalo green, cobalt blue, burnt umber. This is a color I've made mixing burnt sienna, burnt umber, yellow, and white. White and black. I'm gonna be using a round brush. This is a number one round brush. You can use any size as long as it's fairly small. And I'm also going to be using this brush. It's an angle brush. You can also use any type of flat brush, just so long as it's fairly small. This is a 3 8 All right, so you should have a traceable that looks like this with this project. I also have it available online if you need to print out an extra one. If you got one of my kits, or if you just happen to have a stock of these at home, this is a piece of carbon paper or graphite paper. Whenever we use this, we're going to use it with the shiny side touching the canvas. You might see a unicorn that's on my canvas. I'm just reusing this canvas from a previous one that we've done. So I'm going to take my graphite paper, I'm going to lay it on there. You should also have a piece of about six inch wide masking tape if you got my kit. Otherwise, it's probably still in the roll. I'm gonna rip it in half, and then I'm gonna rip each one of these in half as well. So you should have four pieces. I just stick these on the side of my easel until I use them. I'm gonna take the first piece and I'm gonna tape it off to the side. I'm gonna take this guy and tape it over here. I'm gonna take my traceable. I'm gonna plop them right there on the front. I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna tape it down as well, like so. I'm going to take a pen. You don't have to have a pen, it can be a pencil, it can be something that has a blunt edge, such as the end of a paintbrush, and you're just going to trace over the entire image and it's going to transfer that image to your canvas. I'm gonna go ahead and speed up through this so you don't have to sit and watch me trace this whole thing while you go ahead and trace your own. All right, I've traced my entire image I'm going to check it by just peeking behind and making sure that everything transferred. It's okay if you went outside of the lines a little bit because the paint will cover up all of your lines anyways. And it looks like I got everything. So once you've made sure, you're going to just take your tape and I'm going to remove them both at the same time. I'm just going to peel it off and your image should be on your canvas. And I'm going to set this off to the side because I don't need it anymore. What we're going to do first is we're going to paint our background. That way if any of our background gets on top of our sloth or our tree, we can cover it up here in a minute. The colors that we're going to be using for our background are going to be cobalt blue and phthalo green. The idea that you want for the background is to make it look like there's a blurry tree and leaves behind you with some of the sky that's shining through a little bit. So if you happen to pick up a little bit of white to lighten up your blue, if you want it to be more of a lighter sky blue, you can do that as well. The way we're going to achieve this is by brushing colors onto our canvas in blues and greens, and it's going to make it look like a tree with the sky shining through it. And it's gonna be blurry in the background because that's not really the focus of our painting, but it has a lot of really nice bright color. The way we're gonna do that is we're going to get our brush damp, we're just gonna grab a little bit of water, dab it off so our brush moves nice and smoothly over the canvas. I don't want a whole lot of blue, so that's what I'm going to put in first. That way we can cover up a little bit of it at first because we don't want more sky than we have leaves. I'm gonna grab a little cobalt blue and I'm going to go in one direction this whole time that I'm putting this color on. So I'm going to put streaks of blue. I'm gonna put a little patch there, a little patch there. This is a little gap in my tree. I'm gonna add a little patch there. And I'm just gonna add diagonal patches across my whole background. I'm even gonna come up right to this tree. And I just want there to be blue chunks everywhere. But I want them to all go in the same direction. If you want to paint your, uh, if you want to paint your sides as well, you can go ahead and add some of these blue diagonals over to your sides too. You can just make those green later if you want to do that too. I'm just gonna 
lift this up and put a little on the bottom. And so it doesn't completely stick to my easel. I'm just gonna rest it on the edge. We can add more blue here in a minute. I just wanna get some of this in here first. Once you've got a bunch of blue patches like that, we're going to not clean out our brush. I still have a little blue on here. That's all right. I'm going to dip my brush in my phthalo green, and I'm going to add some patches all around these blue patches. I don't want you to go on top of each other just quite yet. I just want them to be right next to each other. I'm gonna go around my whole canvas and put green patches next to my blue patches. Now I've added almost all of my background in green. That's okay, but the rest of it we're going to fill in with just a mixture of blue and green. And if you want, you can grab a little bit of white and throw it in there too. And it'll make some of your green areas a little bit brighter and some of your blue areas a little bit brighter. For this, I want you to just play with the background until it looks as beautiful as you want it to look. The only thing that you need to make sure that you're doing is keeping your whole background going in the same direction. I like going from this low diagonal up to the right, but you can go this way or this way, as long as they're all going in the same direction. So I'm gonna speed this up while you go ahead and finish your background, and I'm gonna finish mine. All right, so we've gone ahead and painted our entire background. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna clean out our brush. And we're gonna still use this brush for the next part. The next part we're gonna paint is our tree. You're going to take your, your burnt umber, this dark, dark brown, and I want you to go ahead and paint the entire tree with this burnt umber color. You're gonna be able to see through it a little bit, so you should still be able to see some of your little bark lines that keep the, that make the tree look like it has a really nice direction to it. Uh, so I'm just gonna come up here and I'm gonna paint my whole tree with this burnt umber color. P.S. It's okay if you cannot see your lines through a tree because they're just guidelines anyways and we're gonna add them in with black in a little bit anyway. Mm -hmm. 
side note, I don't know what happened here, but I added a branch that doesn't actually exist. If you did something like that too, it is okay. We're just gonna go with it. Voila! I've painted my tree. It's a little see-through. I've got a plan for that in a little while, so don't worry about it. You can go ahead and clean out your brush. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put the color on our sloth. We're going to switch to our round brush. We're going to want to get it damp first, dab off the extra water, and for the sloth, we're going to use this color that I mixed up right here. You're going to grab some of it on your brush and you're just gonna paint the entire body of the sloth. It's okay if you cover up this line right here while you're painting because we can add it back in with darker paint. So I'm gonna go ahead and speed this up while I paint the body of the sloth. All right, we've painted the first layer of our sloth on. I'm gonna go ahead and clean out my brush. This next part, we're gonna add some of our black. We're still gonna use our round brush. I want you to grab some of your black and I want you to try and find your tree lines that were your bark. If you lost them, I just want you to find them again or just make them up. You can even use your reference sheet to see where they originally were. If you don't want to use these, just make up your own. I'm going to put one right here. And 
and they all go in the same direction. They don't go side to side. They're only going up and down. All right, so I've added some bark lines to my tree. I'm gonna paint some of my other things in black as well. One of those being the eyes. This circle right here, you're gonna use the tippy toes of your brush and you're going to paint it in black. You can also paint your little nostrils in black. And your fingernails are going to be black. I left a little white space because I'm not entirely sure that I want to make these all black. No, I'll just paint them all black. Do, do, do. We'll add some, some extras to them here in a little bit. Perfect. And we'll go ahead and paint our mouth. Yeah, we'll paint our mouth now. My mouth got a little funny, but that's okay. Maybe he's got a funny expression on his face. Very nice. Now I'm gonna clean out my brush. He's probably looking a little goofy right now, but that's okay. I'm gonna clean out my brush. I'm gonna grab some of that dark brown, that burnt ochre, and I'm going to paint these areas around his eyes because that's a very slothy look to have this pattern of dark brown around their eyes. Now what I'd like you to do is in the lid of one of the cups that your paint came in or on your paint tray, whatever you're working with, I want you to take a little scoop of black like that and put it somewhere where you can mix up a little bit. I'm gonna take a little more. So I have a little scoop of black. I'm gonna take a little scoop of white like that and I'm going to put it on top of the black and I'm going to tap them together 
I don't want to stir it around because it'll dry on my palette and I won't get any paint. So I just kind of tap right in the same spot and it's going to turn gray. We just need a little tiny bit of this and we're going to paint our nose gray. You want to leave your nostrils black but we're going to paint around the nostrils and just add some gray paint in there. It's okay if you lose your nostrils a little bit. We only painted them in first so we have a general idea of where they were when we come back to it. I have my nose in. I'm going to come up to my fingernails and I blacked it all out with our paint but we're going to take this gray and we're going to put one two, three, right on top of that black. And it's gonna bring your fingernails back out. And we can add some more black here in a minute if you don't quite like the way that gray looks right on top of it, but it makes our fingernails not look so flat. I'm gonna clean up my brush again. We're gonna put a little color on our face now. We're also gonna mix up some color for our face. I want you to take some of your sloth color and scoop it out like that. Put it somewhere nice and safe. And take a little more just in case to make sure I have plenty. Like so. I'm also gonna scoop some white and I'm going to put that white right on top and just like we did with the gray, we're just gonna tap it around until it starts to mix and it's going to make that color look a lot light, look a lot lighter. Like that. And we're gonna paint this on our face. I really like that color. Before we go any further, I want to throw out a couple tips. The first being, if you painted over something and you lost it, it's okay. I want you to just go ahead and paint over it. You can use your reference that you already have and you can add it back in once your paint dries. It's not a big deal if you've lost it. If you've painted into a space where you accidentally just got paint mixed in with it, say in my face, maybe I accidentally got a little uh, gray because I mixed in with my black here, it's okay, you can add another layer here in a little bit. No big deal. What I wanna do now is I wanna dry my painting before I put any more layers on to make sure that everything is nice and dry. I will be back once my painting is dry. All right, everybody, we're back. We're gonna be putting on some more layers of paint here to make sure that everything looks nice and rich, unless you like the way that it looks a little transparent, because the tree could kinda of look really cool with it being a little more transparent. It looks like it has some texture to it, but I do wanna make it darker, only because I want it to look a lot darker than my sloth, and my sloth, ended up turning out a little bit darker than I liked. So what I'm gonna do on my second layer of my sloth is I'm adding a little bit of white to my face and to the, my fur color before I put it on. That way it lightens up my paint just a little tiny bit because I think that it blends into the tree a little too good. And that might be a good thing in nature, but not on my painting. All right, I'm gonna take my flat brush and I'm gonna put another layer on my tree real quick. If you don't want another layer, you can go ahead and just skip through it. If you do want another layer, you can go ahead and work while I'm working.
have another layer added to my tree. I ended up going a little bit lighter than I thought it would because I really do like all the texture from the lighter, uh, from the lighter coat of paint. So that's all I'm gonna put on there. I'm gonna clean out my brush. I'm going to add some of my black lines in because I do like those to be really rich. So I'm going to switch to my round brush real quick. You don't have to do this if you don't want to. I'm just gonna put some more black on top of my lines that I already have just to bring those back out from going over them with brown paint. And it doesn't have to be perfect because this is bark and bark doesn't have perfect lines. We just want these nice directional lines so that it makes it look more tree-like because half of our tree is cut off. We're all done with that. What I want to do now is I want to add that second coat to our sloth. I'm going to start with the body first. This time I'm going to use my flat brush because it does go a lot faster. You can keep using your round brush if that's the one that you feel more comfortable with. And again, I mixed a little bit of white with my face color in my fur color because I want to see what it looks like a little bit lighter because I do think that's a little bit too dark. So I'm just going to mix up some white in there. I just do it off to the side, and I'm going to add this. There we go. I'm going to slow uh, slow down on painting around the face here because I'm seeing that the color that I've mixed is my face color and I don't want to lose the shape of my face. So I'm going to not do anything around the face now. I'm gonna skip around it. This is just kind of the nature of painting sometimes. It's not perfect. I could just erase this video and just make it over and pretend like it didn't happen. 